Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is actually three games, and we'll be taking a look at each one of them. They're going to be 18 card card games, and they're going to be called Shields Up by Patrick McNeil, Kingdom 18, and this was a Microbox series by Jason Glover, and Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve by Daniel Grek. And these three different games are just small micro games in which you're going to be doing different things. In Kingdoms 18, you're going to be playing basically a somewhat war style game, which also has a little bit of a deck builder in Involved in it. Shields Up is a space battling game in which you're going to be building different things like death rays and space bombs and tractor beams and all that good stuff, trying to destroy your opponent's shields. And Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve is a game in which we're trying to gain as many points as you can in your cavern, provided that there's nobody that has a special hammer. In that case, you're going to choose the different caverns. And there's one in the middle that you can actually switch cards around. Moving cards around is going to give you more points. But these are the three basic games, and they all have their own unique little theme, their own unique little style. And let's go ahead and take a look at all three of them. So here here we have all three of the games set up so you can see all the components in them. And of course, they basically have a box. The rules are going to be attached to the box on the inside by simply going like this and popping it open. You're going to see the basic gameplay and storyline on the top, the rules, how to set it up, and then of course, all of the extra stuff you need to know about the game. Each of these games is going to be able to do that, and you're simply going to attach it just like that and uh, put the cards in, and they're ready to go. They are all travel ready and very, very small and simple, 18 cards apiece. Dungeon Delve is going to come with two of these cards given to each opponent, each player and each player is going to see the number of cards in the deck, so they're going to have an idea of what's going to be in here, as well as a deck of cards that all has their unique points at the top right left-hand corner and the abilities of the cards on the bottom. These Shields Up game is going to come with the box and just a big deck of cards. You're going to be using these cards to show your shield, as well as cards in your hand, and a little market where you can actually buy cards and uh, trade them off. This over here, Kingdom 18, is going to come with three separate decks of cards. They're going to be the red cards for one player. You're going to have the blue cards for another player and they both have the same deck, along with the big deck of point scoring cards, which will be added to your deck as you score them. And they're going to have the point scoring up here, and then of course symbols on the top and the bottom of each of the cards. That is the main components for each of the three games. Let's go ahead and talk about them in a small amount of detail above. So let's go ahead and talk about each one in a small amount of detail. First of all, Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve, 18 cards. You're going to shuffle these guys up, deal out four cards to each player, and they're going to set them down in their own little dungeon area, along with four cards in the middle, which is going to be the deck's dungeon. You've got the depths, which is going to be the rest of the deck, which might be used throughout the game. And then you're going to begin by each player taking turns, selecting cards in their dungeon, and doing what it says, and then placing their card on top of the card that was used, in which case you're not going to be able to use that card, as well as one of the cards for each round in the dungeon, which I'll explain a little bit down below when we finish this. But you're going to be trying to gather as many points as you possibly can in your dungeon, or acquiring the smiter, which will let you choose which of the three dungeons you'll be scoring points from, and then having your opponents score the other points with the other dungeon. And at the end of all four rounds, whoever has the most points is going to win, and you can continue by playing more and more points for more and more rounds. You've also got shields up here, where you're going to start off with two shields by shuffling this deck, placing two cards in front of you, placing two cards in front of your opponent, having two cards in your hand, and then a deck of cards that you're going to deal out two cards next to, to use as the shop. On your turn, you're going to have two actions, and those actions will be involving drawing cards, buying cards from the shop, or simply playing cards in front of you or on your opponent, your objective being to destroy your opponent's shields. If you destroy their shields and do one more damage to them, you're going to win the game, and you can also choose to place shields down to protect yourself. Uh, the last cool thing with this game is you're able to also play cards in front of you, and as you score sets of cards, such as having three death rays, you'll be able to use those abilities to damage your opponent's shields, thusly rendering them defenseless and then destroying them. You've got De De Kingdom 18, which is going to be every single player, well, each player will have four cards, they're going to be either red or blue, and all four of these cards are the same. And then you're going to have the other deck of cards in which you're going to then shuffle and place two out. Players are going to put down two cards on each side based on the cards in their hand and based on the side they want. They can choose this side or the other side. And of course, each side is going to be dependent on the type of cards that are being dealt out. Some cards are going to give bonuses for having... Um, for having like the knight out, or some cards are going to have bonuses for having maybe the uh, diplomacy out, and give you bonus points for that. Other cards are going to have negative points involved with them, or positive points with them. Your objective is to score as many points as you possibly can by earning the, ca the cards in the middle, and staying away from scoring the cards that give you negative points. As you score cards, they're going to go into your deck, 
going to shuffle that deck for the next round, and then you're going to draw those new four cards out, which might give you the cards that you won, and thusly be able to continue playing until all the cards from the main deck have been played out, and then telling the points you have in your deck, whoever has the most points is the winner. Those are the, th the three basic games and the three basic aspects of how to play them. Let's go into a little bit more detail by showing you the setups of the game and a little bit of how to play each and every one of them. Starting off with Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve, you're going to simply take the deck of cards and then each player is going to have their player reference cards and they're going to set it next to them. You're going to shuffle this deck up and then you're going to deal out four cards here in the middle as well as giving out four cards to each player, making up their dungeon as well as the dungeon here. These are the depths in which you might, might be actually drawing more cards from here and moving them around depending on the cards you get. And over here these reference cards are simply going to tell you what type of cards are in the game, uh, what the points are worth, and how many of them are in the deck total. There's 18 cards here along with all the points cost on this side here, and the name, of course. On your turn, you're simply going to start off by moving this card here, indicating the first round, and then choosing a card from your dungeon and playing it and doing what it says. Some cards will let you move cards from the middle and switch them around, or switch your opponent's cards around, and all that kind of stuff. But the objective, obviously, is to get points into your dungeon. As you can see here, there's seven, eight, and nine points here, and in this corner over here, you've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight points here. So this player is going to score more points and you're going to be continuing playing the game. It'll actually certain that while well, games here have scoreboards on the side like this one here has experience and levels and you're going to be playing like that to score points. Now every single turn each player is going to get to reveal a card and do what it says, flip it down and then place their scoring card on the or placing the reference card on the card that you used meaning you can't use it for the next round. After that happens the next one of these is going to go and you can't use this one and you're going to be able to use these guys and then you're going to select a new card and do what it says. Basically the idea though is just switching cards and swapping cards around to get as many points on your side of the field as possible. After all four rounds have been completed, then you're going to go ahead and choose to tally your side and your opponent tallying their side of points, and whoever has the most points is the winner of that round, and you're going to play again. Now, there are a couple interesting cards that change the way the game works. Obviously, the dragon is the most points. you got arrow traps that are going to move the board around. you got sun rods that let you look at your opponent's cavern and your own cavern cards. And then there is this thing called the smiter. The smiter is basically if you have it in your area or your row, when a game ends, you're going to get to choose any of these three dungeons to score points from, but you won't know because they'll be face down. So you're basically going to be hoping you score the most points. Luckily, if this player picked this spot, he would most likely score the most points, but then as a point, we get to choose between these guys here. So if he chose 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points, and he had this smiter here, his opponent would get to select one of these guys' areas over here, maybe he'd select this one, and he would score 8, 9, 10, 11 points. And that is the idea of the game. You can look, this one's here is like take a card and move it around. Around, a switch a card from your cavern, so on and so forth. The basic idea is just moving cards around on the board, and that's the idea of how to play the game Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve. Let's go ahead and take a look at Shields Up. So here is Shields Up, and as you can see, you get a deck of cards, which you're going to be going ahead and shuffling, and then you're going to be giving your opponent two cards as shields face down, and uh, two cards in hand for each player. You're also going to take the deck of cards and place it down in the middle, and reveal two cards so that people can choose to buy them from the shop. This is the earliest, and this is the latest, oh, this is the latest card, and this is the earliest card. And it takes one action to buy this one and two actions to buy this one. You can also choose to use an action to draw a card from your deck, from the deck, and every single turn you get two actions. An action involves buying, drawing, playing cards as shields face down, or playing cards face up and trying to score, trying to get um, all the matching. This one's actually a wild, and here's a death ray that's red, so if you got one more, you can use the death ray ability. Your objective is to destroy other people's shields. So, for instance, on my turn, if I wanted to, I could simply draw a card for an action and play a card for an action right next to me, which is then going to say missile, and this one shows how much damage it does, which is right here, and how many cards of the type it needs in order to be used. Once both cards that are matching are on my field, I can actually use the ability to do damage to an opponent's shields. If you can destroy your opponent's shields, you're going to go ahead and flip them over and see what they do. Some of them are going to be space mines, which will be traps. They will actually do damage to an opponent's shield, and others are just going to be basic cards. They're going to go to the graveyard. After your deck runs out or and gets into your hand or from your field, you're going to take the deck and you're going to go ahead and reshuffle it. And the idea of the game is pretty simple. Buying, selling, uh, placing cards down, or just attacking with space mines. Space mines are the main card you'll be using to do damage because you're going to be just drawing them, and as an action you can spend two of them to do two damage to shields. Whoever is able to deduce their reduce their opponent's shields to zero and do one damage to them is the winner for the game Shields Up. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the game Kingdoms 18.
So here we have Kingdoms 18, and of course you're gonna get the deck of cards that is the base deck, and you can tell by the fact that it has no color here in the middle. You're also gonna be getting the points here, and then of course the value of a card for when you play it on your turn. This is the only important thing during the gameplay though, uh, before you actually get it into your hand. So you shuffle this up. Each player is also going to be getting their four cards, which are all the same for each player, and then they're going to be taking these cards and hiding them so the other opponent cannot see them. You're gonna take two cards from this deck here, and you're gonna place it just like that if you'd like, and then each player is going to play cards face down on the locations. Whoever has the most points in the area is going to be scoring these, these, these points here. However, these are negative points. Others might be positive. So if I went to go ahead and place these cards face down like that, he would place these cards face down like that. He's going to look at them, of course, but I'm just doing an example. You then flip them over at the same time, and the cards that are closest to it are the ones that are going to count. Now, of course, the shield is going to stop the knight and make the knight worth zero and take the knight's point and the assassin dagger, which would be this one, would actually stop this diplomat here and make it zero and make him take all the points. These sides are not useful because they're not pointed. You'd have to actually have it like that for it to be relevant. After that, you're gonna know the point total. So this is a six versus a four, but there's also a symbol here, which means that this is gonna get a plus one. So it's a five versus a six. This one over here says that it's got the dude for plus one, but there's no dude there. So this is going to destroy this and then give this player six points. So currently, he is winning this spot and he is winning this spot. But there's one more round that happens in which players are then going to go ahead and place cards face down again and then flip them face up once more. And up, oh, we see these are just going to cancel each other out for zero. And this is a two and this is a two. So in this case, he's got six, seven, eight, and he has zero and two for two. So he would score this card. And then this one here has got a six versus a five. And these are zeros. So he would score this one as well. Now he's going to get negative points, but he gets to add these to his deck for the next round, he's going to be able to shuffle these cards up like this, and then draw four cards, and he might get those cards, and usually the ones that have negative points are very strong. This is actually a seven, which is pretty good, so it'll secure him more likelihood of winning the other cards, which actually are worth points. He won't get anything, though, but he's not going to get negative points either. The rounds are going to continue going like this, where you place more cards down, and placing the uh, new cards in your hand, once again, scoring the points. Here's a six and a four. After all of these cards have been dealt out and given to the players for winning, the final round is going to go and then whoever scores the most points at the end of the game by revealing their hand when there's no more cards left in the deck is going to win. So in this case, this player has a six and a two and a negative three, which means he's got five points, oh, six, seven points. And then this player over here, he has got negative one. He's got a four, which is three. He's got a six, which is 10. Uh, that's 14, and that one is 11. So then whoever has the most points is the winner of that game. And that's the basic idea for Kingdoms 18. In fact, that's the basic idea for all three of these mini 18 card games. So let's get to reviewing all three of these games. And we're gonna go ahead and start with my least favorite games up to my most favorite games. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is Itty Bitty Dungeon Delve. In this game, you're basically gonna be moving cards around. That's the idea. You have your dungeon, your opponent's dungeon, moving cards around, scoring points at the end of all four rounds, and rinse and repeating. It has a nice little aspect to it where it's only 18 cards and it has a little bit of depth to it as well. A little bit of delving in which you're trying to um, figure out what your opponent has, what you have, and one of the best plays to make throughout the game. It's a little confusing because you're placing cards on top of other ones, you're turning to the sides, so you can't really use certain cards throughout the game, which makes sense on one level, and it's kind of like debilitating on another level, but it functions very well. There's nothing I have negative to say about this game, other than it's just very, very simple, and it comes down to just placing the cards correctly and moving them around on the board. The art's super cool, the game is nice, the boxes are nice for all of these things, they're very, very simple. I wouldn't spend a huge amount of money on all any of these things, obviously, they're basically these small little games, but they're fun to have, especially for traveling. You can play this game pretty much anywhere. The next one we talk about is Shields Up. And this one, the first time we played it, we broke it. And we played it a bunch more times after that because we were like, what? We literally played it to the point where we literally could not do damage to each other because all of our shields had our main damage ones, and we, um, on our own turns, had, had ones that were each other, like, the, like if he had two death rays and I had one death ray, so we just couldn't do damage. But after we played multiple times over and over again, we found that that was a very, very small, like, chance that it can happen. That would be my one thing about the game, is it has that, that, that aspect that it can happen. If that, if that actually happens, just restart it and play again. And they're so quick and so simple that it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, with Shields Up, it's cool, though, because you have a lot of actions, and there's there's drawing cards from the deck, you've got the little buying area, you've got your shields, which you can use face down, which can have mines in them, and then you're building components with 18 cards. There's a lot to this game, and I like that aspect. The art is so-so, but the game itself is very presentable, it's very fun, and I think you'd be interested in it if you just, I mean, I think if you 
you that sounds interesting to you, you're gonna like it. Kingdoms 18 is my favorite of the three games. This one has a lot of depth to it. It has a lot of deduction and perception because it's similar to the Holmes and Moriarty game in which you're gonna be placing cards face down, determining what your opponents are playing and how you wanna play cards because you wanna win certain ones and you wanna lose certain ones because you wanna get the most points you possibly can. And sometimes losing in certain areas is a good idea because you're gonna gain cards that allow you to have higher point totals to win the bigger cards that are coming up. So it depends on how these cards are being placed up. The art again is okay and the style of the game is excellent. Excellent. This is very strategic, very fun, very simple. It is definitely my favorite micro game of the three, and it might even make my favorite micro game um, my top 10 list. I, it's very, very close in that aspect. All three games are fun though, and if it came out of a three pack, I would definitely pick it up for like 10 bucks or whatever. Uh, they're really cool. I really, really enjoy them, and I think you should definitely give it a check in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you like this video, go check out those other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment in the very bottom. We really do greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe. It does help, and we love you for it. Also, checking out these cool little mini dungeon games, Dungeon Delve, Shields Up, and Kingdom 18. Of course, you know my order, but that might be different for you, and you have that right, so that's fine. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. In fact, a giveaway coming out with from AEG. We'll be doing showing off Space Space. You can have a chance to win that. You can go in the description below to our website. And as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek. Two great giveaway sites with some great blogs and reviews. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one, and as always, I love you and I look forward to seeing you next time.